I think probably the variable for things like the stiffness to mass ratio of the whole plate, and then possibly including the struts, including the struts, and, it, and, and the individual stiffness to density ratio of the actual material that you happen to have on the top of the guitar. I'm not so sure that that's as crucial as it, as people might think. <laughs> the one that um, Rob's just made, it's got a beautiful polymer top, yeah. and um, struts made of. It's just. Why would you know? Just a bit. Yeah, just a bit of spruce. Yeah, just yeah. spruce underneath. Oh, yeah. And um, I mean, Gordon was saying it's one of the best guitars ever played. He's saying it's. Uh, you're talking about you know, the equivalent sound of a 2,200 pound Adamus. And so we're thinking, well, why would we change it? What's going on here? What, whatever you start with. Uh, a good guitar maker will mess around with it, um, find what works, find what doesn't, yeah. and, and ultimately come up with something I, I would guess it must be near off done uh, in terms of what you can do with it. Well, that's really interesting. Interesting. From our point, it's really interesting is that we're using polycarbonate, foam polycarb, and we've got samples of foam PVC. It's cold process almost identical. Yeah, it sounds completely like this. Oh, yeah. You know, you go, you tap it, and you just get a dull thud, and that's it. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, it's got to be stiff. If, it's, if there's any kind of um, I was, uh, I, with the little word with you, I used the word flubbery or kind of floppy. If it's still floppy, then that just doesn't move the air effectively enough. Um, all the energy is used in the friction within the plate yeah, itself. Yeah, kind of said it's going to yeah. bad ones, it's really rubbery, really kind yeah. of... If you, if, you think, if you think of a very stiff plate, yeah. think of just how... Think of a trampoline made, made in rubber, okay, and it just goes flubber or flubber down. That really doesn't transfer by uh, well, it, it moves a lot of air, but a lot of energy is taken up in moving the stuff itself. So if you've got a very flat plate, so you just think of a bullseye, it's just in the middle of the plate that's doing some very effective pushing in and out, really punching its way through the air. That's a much more effective way uh, of getting the plate to vibrate to transfer any vibrations through the air. So if it is flubbery and floppy, uh, you, you're wasting a lot of energy in kind of the edges, if you see what I mean. Yeah. It, um, I, I, I do a little diagram in my thesis, I can, I can change yeah, the actually, thesis I want. Um, if you just think of the cross section of it, if it's like that, um, so it's very, that's kind of punchy, isn't it? That's a stiff plate moving in and out, it goes like that and then like that. That's punchy, it's all the, all the displacement is in the middle. Mm. If you think of a membrane, it'd be kind of flubbery, so all of the, a lot more of the displacement would be yeah. around the sides, where you're, not getting, you're just not getting as much bang for your buck in terms of what the string can do to this plate. You're wasting a lot of energy in the sides of it. Same way with percussion. You're moving up. If you've got a drum with it. Yeah, um, I mean, kettle drums and that kind of thing. But of course, that's got a big enclosure, and you can yeah. and smack that, so it doesn't matter so much. If if it's a string, a very thin wire, then no matter how hard you smack the string, it's going to be limits to how much displacement it can cause in a plate. So, so I suspect me, me and Rob might talk in a different language. Mm -hmm. Um, he'd, he'd probably talk about it, it sounds stiffer or it feels stiffer and, I, and I'd be talking about kind of displacement amplitudes in, in yeah. various places. You're really pointing at the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I was saying it's that we, we're yeah. using this different languages to describe the yeah. same thing. And it's the musical acoustics network of it. It's supposed to be yeah. tech players and, and physicists talking to one another. But I don't, I don't but they don't. They don't. <laughs> 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 no, they don't. Oh, you got the, you know, the, yeah, the, the players. The physicists turn like, into pedants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the musicians yeah. just, uh, just become going. their own cool clique. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what happened again. Yeah. <laughs> just, it, it's, it, it's very common. So mm. it's, it's hard to all try and talk the same language. Yeah. There is no measurement that you can make on a guitar which is outside of human perception. No, you can measure there what is. they produce and how they produce it. Oh, oh, oh no, but, but once you've got the thing they've produced, you can stick little accelerometers on it, you've got to get a microphone, and you can make measurements. Now, you might be able to make sense of it, but there's nothing within that that the human ear can pick up that these microphones and things can't. So we don't need to worry that um, there's something magic, magic about the human it can be very complicated. that can pick it up just that like the your voice can't. is 
complex in that you know, there's, there's the words you're using. Well, the voices, you're using. voices are tricky because there's, you can't stick things to these flaps. With a guitar, you can stick things all over the bit of wood. It's just a case of knowing, knowing which bits to measure. Absolutely, you do yes. things you could possibly. Absolutely, it's that you, you can't, knowing what to measure and how to interpret those measurements is very difficult. Language is, is often difficult because the same word can mean three different things in three people to different people's minds. The word resonance. Um, now, having done a physics degree, I, I feel I know what the word resonance means um, quite well. Yet, that same word might be used uh, countless times during a conversation and it mightn't occur to anyone that people were using it in completely different ways. If a musician or a guitar maker uh, uses the word resonance or, or something like that in a way that you, you kind of go just just a minute let's try and be clear what that means um, if they're not using it in the correct way it's the scientist's fault for not making it very clear not communicating uh, the, the science behind those words uh, clearly enough there, there are all kinds of measurements you can make of a, a musical instrument it is a structural vibration there is no magic there um, your ears are incredibly perceptive tools, but they are just picking up simple vibrations of the air, transferred to the air by simple vibrations of an instrument. There's no magic. Um, you can detect everything that is humanly detectable about that vibration. There is, there's no magic there. Yeah. It's, it's just about knowing what to measure uh, and how to make sense of those measurements. Um, just measuring the sound at the end that's difficult because you've got to be able to try and translate the structural changes to that sound. If you can't put the two together, then it's like, you know, encryption. It's like an enigma machine or something, taking a load of sentences, making them complete gobbledygook, and then just bringing something out at the end. You need to know what's happening at each stage, what you're measuring at each stage, in order to make sense of um, how you view the instrument. We're talking about the engineering of the sound and we understand the engineering of the human voice box, how it filters the sound coming out of your mouth. All of that is very well understood, yet we can't say how you come up with a perfect opera singer or you, how you get a brilliant singer. That's uh, the level that we're talking about. Um, what does training do to this apparatus? to make a good singer great or a mediocre singer better. All of that, again, you can make measurements, but unless you know kind of what's happening at the very structural level, um, those measurements are going to be difficult to interpret. Are they too small for us to measure yet, some of those subtleties? Um, it's just uh, generally, no, I don't think so. There are, there are things to do with musical acoustics and musical engineering that are very difficult to measure because there's, there's what's called non-linear effects. They just don't do what you expect. Um, and making measurements on those kinds of things are very difficult. But with guitars, guitars are almost one of the best instruments, certainly classical guitars, they're one of the best instruments you can look at just for simple linear addition of sine wave, just linear um, structural effects have an effect on the sound. There's nothing too difficult about a classical guitar, really, in terms of its physics. It, it does behave itself such that you can, you can learn to know what to measure in order to understand how a structural change becomes a sound change. Um, acoustic guitars are a little more difficult. Um, they're, they're much more tense, the strings, so different kinds of modes of vibration, longitudinal modes where there's the kind of a pulse going up and down the string as well as the string moving side to side, they become a lot more important and they're very difficult to kind of um, accommodate. Uh, and then electric guitars, you've got all these weird things happening in the pickups themselves, uh, which become almost a black box in some cases. So th yeah, there is a, there's a kind of continuum of simple to complicated. Classical guitars are, are actually quite simple, so if we start with them, maybe we'll um, be able to transfer some of that knowledge to acoustic and electric guitars.